Welcome back, everybody. My name is Nick. This is Swiffle Thinking. And in this series, we are learning how to use Git and source control. And in the last video, we did a lot of setup. We created a GitHub account. We created a Git Kraken account. And we updated our Xcode so that it is connected to our Git accounts. So now that we're connected, we can go ahead and actually start using it in a project. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to create a repo and how to clone a repo. So the first thing we're going to do is actually create a new project and then push it up to GitHub. I think that's how most projects start, right? You start on your computer, you create a project, and then eventually you want to save it, push it up to the cloud, push it up to GitHub. The second thing we're going to cover is cloning a repo. So you can imagine that you join a project, you don't have the project on your computer yet, and you want to download it from GitHub down to your computer. So the first time when you download that project, if you're downloading the repo, meaning all of the Git files and version control that's associated with that project, that's called cloning a project. So we're going to first create a project, push it up to GitHub. Then we're going to take a project from GitHub, clone it down to our local machine. I think it's pretty straightforward. So let's jump into Xcode and create a project. Welcome back, everybody. In this series, we are learning how to use Git and source control. And in the last video, you should have already created a GitHub account and connected it to Xcode. We also created a Git Kraken account. If you have not, I will put a link below. You can sign up for free through that link and that will be a GUI, your new best friend for using Git and source control. So in this video, I'm assuming that you're already all set up and connected and we're gonna start moving forward here. The first thing that we need to talk about is how do we actually create a repo? And how do we actually clone a repo? So we're going to do this twice in this video. Firstly, we're going to start on our local computer with Xcode and we're going to create a project and then we're going to push it up to GitHub. So that's going to basically simulate most cases when you're building your own projects, you start it in Xcode and then you push it up to GitHub. But if somebody else started the project or you joined a team, that project's already on GitHub and then you're going to want to pull it from GitHub down to your local computer. That's called cloning. When you copy it for the first time down to your local computer, you're cloning it from the server, from GitHub down locally. So when we create a new project here, it's asking us, do we want to create a new one or do we want to clone one? So cloning is what we're going to do later. We're going to start by creating our own project and pushing it to Git first. So this is the case where there is no project created already. Nobody's already started it and I'm starting it for the first time. So I'm going to create a new project. We're going to make it an app and I'm going to call it Swift full source control and click next, save it where you need to save it. And when you're going to save it, the one thing that we want to make sure here now is that we have source control, create Git repository on my Mac is checked. It should be checked by default, but if you don't have it checked and you start a project and you don't have it checked, there is a button somewhere in the integrate tab that will say, create a new Git repository. So but most of the time when you're creating a new project, you're going to just check this. It's going to be automatically checked, create Git repository on my Mac. And we can see here, Xcode will place your project under source control. So this basically means we were talking in the last video about what is Git. Git is this versioning system where it's going to track all of my changes. This is saying, start tracking changes on my computer. We're going to track all of the changes. Now let's also understand that when I'm creating my project right now in Xcode and I'm tracking changes, that is tracking changes locally. This has nothing to do with GitHub yet. Right now, I'm just creating a project on my computer and I'm saying that behind the project, we wanna put some source control so that we can monitor all of the changes and all of the files. So go ahead and click create and jump into the project. If you did it correctly, when you go to click the integrate or the source control tab, a bunch of these buttons should actually be clickable now. You should be able to commit and push and pull and if you don't have these clickable, that means that your project is not under source control. I think you could probably create a new repo. If you don't have these lit, then you need to add source control to your Xcode project locally. So now I have source control working on my local project. So when I go to make some changes and I add more padding here, we can see this little blue line appear. So if you've never seen these blue lines before, your project has probably never been under source control. But if you're seeing these blue lines, that means it's been under source control this entire time. So this is a good thing. We want to see these lines and these lines are just tracking the changes. If I hover over this, we can see that this is an unstaged and we're going to talk about changes and stage changes 
in a future video. Right now, we're just talking about creating the repo and cloning. So right now, I have this repo. It's under source control, but that's it. It is on my computer and it is not on GitHub. If you go to GitHub right now, you can click on your repositories and you're not going to find your project. And that's because right now, our source control is only on our computer. So now we want to create another version of this that is also on the internet. Going back to this image right here, right now, Git is only on my computer and it's not up here at all. So I can't push and pull to GitHub. I need to first create the actual repository, the repo, the clone on GitHub. When we use this term repository, I think about it as like a massive folder. So a repo is what's going to hold all of the versioning files for this project. So when people say cloning the repo, they're talking about repo stands for repository is basically just the project with all of the files for source control bundled inside of it. That's what the repo is. So right now the repo is only on my computer and not on GitHub. And we want to copy the local version so that it is also on GitHub. So there are two copies of this project, one on GitHub, one locally. And it's actually really easy to do that through Xcode now. So up here I can click integrate and I can click push. And you're going to see there is no remote, meaning there is no remote version of this repo. As I just discussed, there's nothing remote yet. This is how you know you're not connected to GitHub. So we're going to now start working with this new tab that we've probably rarely worked with in Xcode. If you've been following my channel, normally we're in the project navigator, which is this folder here, this blue folder, but there's actually another tab here that's called the source control navigator. So I click on this. This is think of it the same way we think about all of our files. This is the navigator for our files. This is the navigator for our source control. So right now we don't have much. We just have some uncommitted changes. We can see here a list of all of the changes. One file is content view that has an M for modified. And if I click on it, I can see those changes. What has changed in content view? It's just this, this padding line here is what's changed. And we're not going to worry about that again in this video, but we can see the source control from our source control navigator. If I click on repositories, I can see all of the repos. And so when I click on the remote repo, I will see that there is no remote repo for this repository. So even though we have our local repo and we're on our main branch, it is just local and it's not on GitHub. I'm going to right click the remotes and create a new remote here. So this is now going to create the project on GitHub. And if you don't have access to this, you're probably not connected to GitHub, but make sure you have your GitHub account connected here. And then you're going to name the repository. Generally, when you're naming repositories, you don't want to use special characters. So I would just use lowercase, uppercase, maybe dashes and underscores, but don't use exclamation marks and things like that. And, and then you can add a description here if you want. If I look at GitHub, I can see, here's one of my packages, Swiftful Routing. This is Swiftful Routing is the name of the project. And then this is the little description, a little about section. So when you see the previews of projects like this, you can see the name, SwiftUI-Bootcamp, and then the description. So that's what this is asking you your name, and then your description. And you can change these later. You can come in here and you can edit the name. You can edit the description. So this is not something that's set in stone. The last thing it's going to ask you is, do you want this to be public or private? Private means only you can see it and other people that you invite into the project. So later we're going to talk about when you have a project, you can invite collaborators. So if I'm building a project and I don't want the public to see it, I just want to use it and maybe I want one other developer to be writing code with me. I'm going to make it private and then I'm going to invite all the collaborators that I want to work on this project. So only people I invite can see it. That's what private means. And if we really want to get into it, large companies have enterprise GitHub accounts. So this is just a personal GitHub account, but a company will have a enterprise account or a business account with a bunch of personal accounts underneath it. So there are ways where you can share a repo with a enterprise or a company. So if you have a company, you don't need to invite every single person every time. You can invite an enterprise or a company. But for most people, you're basically just deciding, do I want everyone else to see it or not? And my personal projects, so like this playlist, I'm going to make this public. If you want a potential recruiter or an interviewer to see your code, you're going to want to make that public. 
If you're making a personal project and you don't want to share your source code, you want to keep it hidden. Maybe it's an app that you're putting in the app store and you don't want people to copy it. You want to keep that private. Lastly, remote name, just keep it as origin. So I'm going to make this public, no description. I'm going to click create. Once I do this, I should see the origin under remotes. So that tells me that I do have a remote and you should now be able to go to GitHub and click on repositories and you will see your new project, your first project on GitHub. How exciting. Swiffle source control. If I click on it, I can see here all of the files in my project. So it's hard to see when you first created a project, but there's actually a lot of documents that went into creating a basic Xcode project, right? We have preview assets and preview and assets folder and content view and the app. And there's other files that are not listed here. So every single file related to this project has now been pushed up and saved in a repository on GitHub. And when I look here, I can see all of those projects, all of those files. So in here, I can click on this and I can see all of those files. Here's the content view. Here's the actual code that has been pushed up here. And just to show you guys how to use this, this dot dot goes backwards. So if I want to go forward, then I want to go backwards and then go forwards. That's how this works. This is the GitHub online. If you use GitHub desktop, it looks very similar as well. But basically, I now just have all of my documents on GitHub. I'm going to quickly open up Git Kraken now, and I'm going to open up a repo, and I'm going to open up and click on the parent folder of the project, and then click open. And Git Kraken should now give us a user interface to see what is happening in our source control. And this for me is the biggest thing for source control is seeing what is actually happening behind the scenes. Because when I'm looking at my Xcode project right now, right, if I go to the source control, it's pretty obvious that there are changes because I go to this change here, but it's hard to see those changes in comparison to the rest of the source control. There is no tree diagram of what is happening. But if I look at Git Kraken, really helpful, I can see here's the initial commit. So this is what's actually been saved. And then here is my current project. It's a work in progress. We see WIP here. And this means that this is stuff that is being actively, these are active changes in my version control that are not yet committed into the repo. Again, we have this one change in the content view where we added padding. And I can see in Git Kraken really quickly, there's one change that has not been committed. If I click on it, I can see the change. And I can see that it is unstaged, meaning it is not staged. It is not ready to be committed. We're going to talk about staging in an upcoming video, so I'm not going to get into that now. But this is the start of why we really like Git Kraken, because we can see visibly what has happened here. Before we continue to move forward, though, we're going to talk about cloning. So firstly, this is all connected and it's working, but let's unconnect it and break some things uh, to talk about cloning. So. What I'm going to do is actually go into the folder where I saved my entire project here. So I have my Swift full source control. I'm going to highlight all of the documents related to it. I'm going to right click and I'm going to move them to the trash. All right. Don't allow. I'm going to close out of Xcode. Probably should have closed Xcode first. And then you'll notice that Key Kraken has also disappeared. So right now, let's pretend like I don't have this project anywhere. If I try to open it, it is not saved locally. I don't have anything saved for that project. So most of the time when you join a company, you join a team, there's already a project on GitHub. So I can see the project here on GitHub, but I don't have it locally. So how do I get the remote repo back into my Xcode? So there's a couple ways to do it. The first way we can come to the repo, we can literally click open with Xcode. Now, I want you guys to just recognize here that if I click download zip, that's going to download all the files to my computer, but it's not actually opening up this remote repo. So you can download zips for like small projects that you're not really actually going to be working with the source control. But if you want the source control, you either need to clone or open up with Xcode. So now I'm going to open up with Xcode. I'm going to open Xcode and I'm going to do it in the exact same spot where I just saved it. It doesn't really matter if it's the same spot or not, but I'm now basically creating a copy of the remote repo on my local computer. So you'll notice when you click this button here, it says clone. It is creating another copy of the repo. You're not changing any files here. You're not committing updates. You are creating a second copy on your local computer 
of the remote version. So right now we have the project on GitHub only and not on my computer. And I'm now taking the base repo, copying it onto my computer. That's called cloning. So I'm going to clone it onto the computer. So now when I open this up, I should be able to see that I'm inside the source control. So I have the same project here. You'll notice that our second padding is not in the project because we never actually committed it. We never actually saved that change. And when I click on the source control, we should be able to see the repo. So I open this up here. I'm on the main branch and there is a repo that we're connected to. The integrate, all this is connected. So it was super simple. And I, honestly, I love that GitHub has this button to open with Xcode. I'm going to actually close it one more time. I'm going to again, delete this entire project. I'm going to come back into here. Another way to do this, HTTPS cloning. I can copy this URL. I can open up Xcode. I can click clone right here from the recents menu, or I can click integrate clone. You paste in the URL and click clone. It's going to ask you where you want to save it. You can save it back to your local spot. One final way that I like to do this is actually through Git Kraken. So in Git Kraken, we can click clone a repo. Same thing. We're going to clone from github.com. And what I really like here is if I'm connected to GitHub already, I can actually just search for the remotes that are already connected to my GitHub. So I can see here all of my projects. I will search for source control, open that one up and clone the repo. Let's open up the repo quick. And we can see that we now have our source control uh, locally. So we can see all the files that have been committed into the project so far. And we have our initial commit. And I'm going to open up the project that we just cloned. Again, if anything has gone wrong, your folder would not look like this. So make sure that you have the actual project here and then the Xcode project file as well. And at a high level, we have now set up our remote repo and our local repo. And we can already start to see the benefits of this. You could imagine a place where you're working on your computer and your computer breaks. Maybe you pour water on it, you spill your coffee on it. You don't want all of your project and all of your changes ever to only be saved on your own computer. So now if my computer breaks, I now know I at least have another version of everything that I've been working on in the remote repo. So this is great for sharing code between people, but it's also just great for single developers because you now have a backup. You have a place on the internet where all your stuff is saved in case something breaks on your computer or something goes wrong. You have a version here. So at any time throughout this life cycle now, I could delete the entire project from my computer and it wouldn't make a difference for me because I know everything that I've been doing has been saved up to the remote repo and I can clone that whenever I want. So that is it for this video. We learned about how to create a project and then push it to GitHub as well as clone a project from GitHub back down to our local Xcode. Again, if you are in the project, you should be able to see now the, the project navigator. You should be able to see the local branches as well as the remote repo. And on your GitHub, you should actually have the repo as well. In the next couple of videos, we're going to actually start versioning and actually using the source control now that we have it set up. Thank you guys for watching. As always, my name is Nick. This is Swiffle Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video.